Hello, everybody. Welcome to more Political Excess. This time, let's talk a little bit about polling, polling errors, and the expectations for the industry overall as we head into this 2022 midterm. So I've got some articles pulled up here. I'll scroll through these. First up is this New York Times article, and it essentially cautions Democrats to not get complacent or overly confident as some of the polls that have been coming out so far could be a repeat of what we saw two years ago as well as six years ago. So here's a table down here that reminds us how far off the polls were in some key states back in 2020 for president. Since these are the averages, you would hope the polls can be within one, maybe two points in the aggregate. But if they start to get to be three, four more points, then something is way off. So in the U.S., the popular vote for the entire country, it did overestimate by, by four points. Wisconsin, that's a big one. That was almost a 10-point overestimation for Biden. Michigan, five points. Nevada, four points. Pennsylvania, four points. Arizona, two points. Florida, five points. North Carolina, three points. Ohio, eight points. Iowa, seven points. And Texas, four points. Those are all critical states, and they all overestimated Democratic support there specifically Joe Biden. Now, some states do overestimate Republicans. That is true. They're not on this table here, but they're mostly in states that are inconsequential, such as Colorado. So I'll scroll through the rest of this article here. It does try to answer why there are these polling errors. And there's many factors. It does talk about underestimating support amongst white working class voters. That does seem to be a legitimate factor as to something they're missing. But the polls in 2020 were supposed to correct for this since they missed it so badly in 2016. They were supposed to adjust their methodology, correctly modify their sample sizes, change how they reach out and interview. But it mostly didn't pan out. And although Biden eked out a very narrow win across a few states, it does tend to overshadow a lot of the misses the polling industry had for yet another presidential cycle. And this is across Senate races, presidential races, even some House races. Down here is a table that better visually illustrates the overestimation of support for Biden. Only Colorado underestimated his support. The rest were completely in the other direction. So here's another article here that talks about polling. And one thing I do agree with, and I say here on this channel, is that it's possible this time they figured it out and got the polling right. Or maybe it's understating Democratic support and Republicans are going to get wiped out. Or maybe we're in for another repeat and the Democrats are being heavily oversampled again. It's all going to be very easy in hindsight. But I do think almost anything is possible. You do have to look at the trends and the history and some specific polling firms and take a look at their margins of error to get a little bit better idea. It does take a lot more work. So it's easy to look at it on a macro level. So here's a chart for the current midterms that shows what the actual result would be with a 2020 polling error. Three of these states that have Democrats currently in the lead in the averages would actually flip toward the Republicans. That is, Wisconsin would go from plus four Democrat to plus four Republican. North Carolina, plus one Democrat to plus two Republican. And Ohio, less than one point Democrat to plus seven for the Republicans. In another two states would be one point or less. That would be Nevada and Georgia. So this gives both sides enough of a case to demonstrate some confidence. The Republicans are going to say, look at all these previous errors. We're definitely ahead. And the Democrats are going to say, who cares about the past? We've got polls out right now that shows us ahead. That's what they're going to do. They're going to act like they're always ahead. It's what you have to do in politics. The rest of this article goes on to talk about the polling industry again and call screening and how much abortion might be a factor, who's likely to turn out, etc. Sometimes people say, well, Trump is not on the ballot this time, so the polling will be accurate. Yeah, maybe, but he's definitely in the background. And even if he's not, he might have changed the electorate for the long term. And there certainly appears to be a realignment, at least in a lot of these working class rural counties, especially in that Rust Belt. So who knows how much of a factor Trump is? Who knows if the industry will have corrected? Even before Trump, there's always going to be one or two races that the polls just missed. 
it's not surprising if there is one or two off this cycle. It matters how many there are and how much they're off by. So let's switch over to Wikipedia here real quick and look at one of these polls in particular that Republicans usually bring up as being one of the most gross outliers probably ever, but certainly from 2020. And this is for Wisconsin. It is for president. And this is from October 20th to 25th, so really close to the election. There's an ABC Washington Post poll that sampled 809 likely voters. It showed Donald Trump at 40%, Joe Biden at 57%. That is 17 points in a state Biden won by less than one point. That is the most egregious example, but some of the other polls on here are not way better than this. They do show Biden ahead by way more than he actually won by. Now, if you click on this poll and look more into it, it does show you who they sampled. Shows right here, 31% Democrat, 27 Republican, 36 Independent. I don't know if they intentionally thought Republicans are not going to be a large portion of that electorate, and most of the Independents are going to break for the Democrats, because I don't know what else would explain such a massive error like this. But back in 2020 and 2016, when the Democrats looked at these polls showing them comfortably ahead in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, they thought the worst case scenario was they'd win by a couple of points, if not win them by a likely margin. You could of course scroll through here more to look at more specific cross tabs, other questions they asked, and other metrics they measured in this poll. Although I wouldn't really put any stock into actually looking into it, because on its face this is one of the worst polls I've ever seen. So everything doesn't always favor the Republicans. In the U.S. House, on the generic ballot, in 2018, support for the Democrats was underestimated by a little bit. Some people might say certain states are harder to poll. Yeah, I do think that can be true. Some people might point to Wisconsin as being one of those states that is hard to poll. But let's go back to 2010 and look at that U.S. Senate race. This had Ron Johnson up against Russ Feingold. Let's take a look at that polling. In October, Johnson was ahead in every poll by anywhere from two to nine points, and he ended up winning by about five. So those polls there, in the aggregate, they were right on. Some of them a little bit over or underestimating support for Johnson, but no egregious errors, nothing wildly underestimating Republicans there. You could say that that was 12 years ago. Everything's changed since then. That's a fair point. We just don't know the extent that that is true. We'll have all our questions answered in less than two months. Some people are going to look stupid. Some people are going to look like geniuses. Personally, I try to take a little bit more cautious approach. You got to put some stock into the polls, but you also have to factor in some other things, like the polling history, like the reputation of the firm, the trends, the candidates, and your own personal analysis. So anyway, that's a look at polling and the industry as a whole, where it's at, some of the errors they've made, some of the times they've been accurate as well. Let me know down below in the comments. What do you think about polls? Do you trust any of them? Do you trust some of them? Do you trust none of them? Is this the year they're going to get it right, or are they going to be off by a ton again? And if you do enjoy this channel, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.